Guild Wars 2 is a vast MMO coming up on its 11th anniversary. After three expansions and five Living World seasons, the world spans across three continents and just about every known biome. With another expansion just over the horizon, I am due for a refresher on the lore such a vast world contains. Whether you're returning to the game after an extended break, or you're a new player who has used their level 80 boost to jump straight into the new content, here is everything you need to know about the story before diving into Secrets of the Obscure. Spoilers ahead. The main story starts on the peaceful continent of Tyria. Okay, it's not exactly peaceful. The Charan humans have only just secured a very tense peace after centuries of war, and other races like the Norn and Asura are being driven out of their ancestral homes. Our hero starts out near the capital city of their chosen race, and has a short introductory story that serves as a tutorial. It is here that you are then introduced to a prestigious member of your race, who serves as your mentor for the first third of your journey. Humans meet Logan Thackeray, a member of the Seraph who has a complicated history with the Queen. A certain players are taken under the wing of Zoja, a genius Gallimancer who carries out the memory of her mentor Snaff. Char are introduced to Ritlock Burbstone, a Blood Legion Tribune and wielder of the legendary sword Sahothan. Silvari players meet Kaith, a firstborn of the Cycle of Night who is caught between the dream and the nightmare. Norn are acquainted with Ersta Galkin, a ranger blessed by Wolf and former leader of the guild Destiny's Edge, of which all of them were members. From here, the player is taken on a branching journey that partially depends on the background chosen during character creation as well as decisions made along the way. Humans ward off bandits while coming to terms with their past. Asura fight for the Snaff Prize while the Inquest, a faction of Asura who don't let things like ethics get in the way of scientific discovery, try to steal credit for their inventions. Norn try to forge their own legends and prove themselves worthy of the Great Hunt despite their past mistakes. Char must rebuild their warband after a devastating ghost attack and fend off the Flame Legion, a shaman cast of Char who have been outcast by the other three High Legions of Iron, Ash, and Blood. Silvari defend the Dream from the Nightmare Court those Silvari who have turned their back on the Pale Tree, and seek to further connect with the teachings of the Centaur Ventari, who nurtured the Pale Tree into what it is today. By level 30, the paths begin to converge. At this point, no matter your character's race, the player is introduced to the Orders the Vigil, the Dermot Priory, and the Order of Whispers. Each of these orders has their own methods for facing the Elder Dragons, primordial beings who are more forces of nature than being. The Dermot Priory are scholars who research the artifacts of past dragon risings and believe the knowledge of the past holds the secret to defeating the dragons. Writings discovered by the Priory reveal that the dragons have risen twice before in Tyria's history, with the last rising being 10 to 11,000 years prior to the exodus of the human gods. The writings also reveal the names of all but one dragon, and that each of them has its own sphere of influence. There is Primordis, the Elder Dragon of Fire and Conflagration, Jormag, the Dragon of Ice and Persuasion, Krakatoric, the Dragon of Crystal and Fury, Mordramoth, the Dragon of Plant and Mind, and currently most pressing of all is Zaitan, the Dragon of Death and Shadow, whose rising raised the sunken continent of war from the sea and flooded the cities of Lion's Arch and Kainang, and whose minions are pressing into Tyria from the Sea of Sorrows. In these texts, there is also the unnamed Deep Sea Dragon, of whom very little is known except for the tentacle horrors that erupted from the waterways as it breathed. The Vigil takes a more head-on approach, founded by the Char Almora Soulkeeper after she was forced to kill her warband when they were branded by Krakatoric. They believe a united army of the races can take down the dragons. The Order of Whispers is the oldest of the three orders, as well as the most expansive. They trade in secrets and operate in the shadows. They believe Elder Dragons cannot be destroyed in direct confrontation, but must be put back to sleep. A representative of each order is introduced to you by your mentor and you must complete an assignment that is the first step in joining the crusade against the Elder Dragons. Humans must investigate the appearance of undead in the swamps of Keswick Hills and protect Queen Jenna from a corrupted Seraph soldier. Silvari players search for the blade Kalidbolg in order to confront a lich responsible for the murder of a firstborn. Asura are tasked with protecting Professor Gore, who has discovered the Elder Dragons are consuming magic, a discovery the Arcane Council is trying to suppress. Norn discovered that the Dredge have invented a new weapon that attracts dragon minions and are aiming it at the dwarf Ogden Stone Healer in the Dermon Priory, while Char players learn that a dead member of their warband has risen thanks to a cursed amulet, and must destroy it before the corruption spreads. At the end of each story, the player chooses an order to join. Upon joining their orders, players are introduced to their new mentors. Vigil players are introduced to Forgal Cairnson, a Norn warrior who joined the order after losing his wife and children to Icebrood, the minions of the ice dragon Jormag. Order of Whispers players meet Tybalt Lefpaw, a Chargladium engineer trying to prove himself as a field agent. 
Priory players meet Siren, a Solvari elementalist with an adventurous spirit. In between choosing an order and meeting their new mentors, players are summoned to Lion's Arch by Kaith. It is here that they learn the representative of their chosen race was once a member of Destiny's Edge, a guild that once tried and failed to face the Elder Dragon Karkatorik. While listening to the conversation, the player realizes it is due to this failure that they all resent each other. Logan and Ritlock are at each other's throats because Logan was called away to protect the Queen moments before the battle, and Ritlock believes they would have won had he stayed. Air is held in contempt by the others because she led them into battle despite Logan's absence, and Zoja blames her in particular for the death of Snaff. All of them seem to despise each other except Kaith, who has called them together to try to settle their differences and unite against the now looming Elder Dragon threat, Zaitan. While the meeting doesn't end the way Kaith hoped, it does plant the seed for the reunification of Destiny's Edge. A novice in their new order, the player must now prove themselves. Now, instead of the story being determined by the character's race, it branches based on the order they chose to join. Priory players discover that the Drudge unearthed a sword made of the blood of Jormag, but had it stole it from them by Sons of Svanir, a faction of Norn who revere and worship the Ice Dragon. They must recover the sword and lock it in the vaults of the Dermon Priory. Vigil players must fend off Char Renegades who are trying to sabotage the peace treaty between the humans and the Char. Order of Whispers players are tasked with defending Demi Beetlestone as she seeks asylum in return for information about her father, the traitor Minister Codicus. But first, they must rescue her from a faction of pirates. Upon completion of their quest, the player character is promoted. They are given the task of defending one of the tribal races of Tyria from Elder Dragon minions. The faction you are able to assist is once again determined by your character's race. To assist the Grawl, you must help one of their shamans prove to his people that they have chosen a false god in the form of an ice brood. In a similar vein, players must convince the Hylek that the champions they sacrificed are not eating the village, but rather are being turned into undead minions by Zaitan. The ogres need aid defending themselves from their previous chieftain, who has been corrupted by the lingering brand of the dragon Karkatorik and is planning an onslaught against his former tribe. The Quaggans enlist the help of the Orders to defend them from the Ice Brood until their newest clutch of eggs hatch. The Skrit believe that they have found dwarven artifacts, but upon closer inspection they are discovered to be the eggs of destroyers, minions of the dragon Primordis. This leaves their home vulnerable to attack when the eggs finally hatch. Despite the destruction of their homes, each of these groups is inspired by the player putting themselves on the line for them, and pledges their tribe to help the Orders in their struggle against the dragons. You are once again promoted, but the celebration is cut short. You and your mentor soon discover that Zaitan has sent scouts to Lion's Arch, an attack is imminent. The player character and their mentor go to Claw Island, the city's first line of defense, to warn the Lion Guard, and find that the Silvari Traherne is already there for the same reason. His wild hunt, or purpose, is to cleanse the land of ore of Zaitan's corruption, so he is intimately familiar with the undead. Unfortunately, despite both of your warnings, Watch Commander Talon is unconvinced. The Lion Guard have not noticed any signs of impending attack, and Claw Island has a reputation of being impenetrable. Inevitably, the undead attack and quickly overwhelm Claw Island's forces. Commander Talon is killed, and the player character is tasked with lighting the towers of the garrison that indicate to Lion's Arch the base has fallen. Unfortunately, somebody must stay behind to ward off the undead while the survivors flee in boats. Your mentor volunteers, and makes their last stand. One thing all of the Orders agree upon is that Claw Island must be retaken. To do this, you once again team up with Traherne. He entreats the player to consult with the Pale Tree, mother of all Silvari, and consider her wisdom. For in order to nurture the Silvari within the dream and provide their wild hunts, the Pale Tree is able to glimpse in what is to come. You oblige, and the Pale Tree is expecting you. She allows you and Traherne to enter the dream, specifically into a vision of ore. Traherne guides you, as he has knowledge of the sunken continent. He reveals that Zaitan resides in the ruined city of Ara where the human gods resided long before the events of the First Guild Wars. Along the way, you are confronted by Orion Spectres, and eventually you come across a vision of the future. In it, the player and Traherne discover a reunited Destiny's Edge, but even more crucially, a united force of all three orders with Traherne at the helm. The Pale Tree reveals that a victory against Zaitan is possible, but only under the condition that what you saw in her vision comes to pass. But first, she warns you, Zaitan has its eye on the heart of your order and you must return to defend it. Victory at the Order Headquarters bolsters confidence, and your superiors are willing to hear you out about working with the others. Representatives from all three orders meet in Timberland Falls to discuss a way forward. It is decided an alliance is imperative, but it must be led by an independent party from the orders, lest one be seen to have an advantage over the others. This, combined with his knowledge of ore, makes Traherne a perfect candidate. There is only one problem. Not everybody is willing to put their trust in a 21-year-old Silvari with little battle experience. It is up to the player 
character to convince them to come together under his banner. A quick crisis interrupts the meeting, and it becomes the perfect opportunity for Treherne to prove himself. After a rescue mission, he is declared the marshal of this new unity of orders called the Pact, and as his right hand, the player character is given the title of which they will henceforth be known, the Commander. In order to establish a foothold in Or, the Pact must obtain an ancient artifact. The Largos Saya al Rajid knows of an orb she describes as a thing of legend that can ward off a dragon's corruption. Its origins are unknown, even to dwellers of the deep ocean, but those who die near it, she says, do not rise again. After intercepting the orb from the crate, the Pact is able to establish Fort Trinity in the Straits of Devastation. Zaitan feels the pressure and mounts an assault of undead, but the Pact is able to hold strong. Upon the initial push into Or, the commander discovers that the discoveries of Professor Gore from the Asura personal story ring true. The dragon is looking for ancient artifacts to consume for their magic. The first order of business is to cut off the source and starve Zaitan, which means taking down some powerful minions, the eyes of Zaitan and the mouth of Zaitan, the former of which seeks out enemies and magical artifacts while the latter consumes them. Upon defeating the Sovereign Eye and freeing the spirit of King Reza from Zaitan's corruption, it is revealed by him that the eyes are corrupted members of the royal families of Or. This leads Draharan closer to fulfilling his wild hunt. Reza informs the commander and Traherne that as the Sovereign Eye, it was his task to guard the source of Or's magic, the Arcesian waters beneath the Cathedral of Verdance, where the human gods first set foot upon Tyria. Traherne uses Khalid Bolg to complete a ritual cleansing the waters, but you both know that the cleansing can only take root if Zaitan itself is destroyed. There is only one option, to push forward into the ruined city of Ara. Spent from the ritual, Traherne is unable to join the final assault. In Ara, the commander meets a reunited Destiny's Edge. They all board the Pax airships and take to the skies to face the Elder Dragon. Zaitan is well defended, with several of his dragon champions engaging the Pact in battle. They are fended off, but they don't go down without a fight, and the heroes must abandon a battered airship and hop onto the decks of the Glory of Tyria the flagship of the fleet armed with the best technology of all five races. It is here that Zaitan finally shows itself and is shot out of the air. Clinging to a ruined tower, Zaitan lashes out, but it is ultimately in vain. The pact shows no mercy, and the dragon is bombarded by the cannons aboard the airship until it finally succumbs to the onslaught. All across Tyria, celebrations ring out. At last, the lands are free from the corruption of the dragons and their minions, or so it seems. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey down memory lane. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to be notified of the next video where we will be discussing the events of Living World Seasons 1 and 2. If you wish to talk more about the story and upcoming expansion, I am live on Twitch every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, and even sometimes on Mondays. Again, thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you soon.